So Visual Studio 2013 provides this new wizard for creating ASP.NET projects. One of the great new features of Visual Studio 2013 and ASP.NET MVC5 is the new wizard that's available for creating ASP.NET projects. It's called OneASP.NET. The idea behind it is that instead of having a bunch of different project types to choose from when creating a new project, there's now one new project type and then with it you can select the various components that you want to include. In earlier versions of Visual Studio, the new project dialog would offer you lots of different project types to choose from, and then from there you would get a wizard specific to that project type. That was often confusing for new developers, and so this process makes it much simpler. If you want to create a web forms application, or an MVC application, or a web API, or other types of ASP.NET applications, to do so, when you click on New Project from the menu, You'll come over to the web option, and then you'll, have, you'll be given one choice of ASP.NET Web Application. And then from there, once you click that, then you'll have the option of selecting the various components that you want to configure, whether you just want web forms, MVC, web API, what have you. Also, in the latest version of 2013, there is a new feature called Application Insights. Now, Application Insights integrates directly with Azure, so you'll need an account with Azure to make use of it. But basically, what Application Insights does is it allows you to collect telemetry data on your ASP.NET application. While this is not specifically an MVC feature, it is something that you can make use of within your MVC 5.0 applications to help gain critical information on the performance of your application so that you can improve it and make it better. Now, to use the Application Insights, you're going to need an Azure account with an active subscription. The cool thing about that is if you don't have an account already, you can actually go sign up for one, and there's a free trial subscription so that you can get started today using your MVC project with the telemetry data collection that Application Insights offers. Basically, when you add Application Insights to a project, when the project's created, it's going to add three Application Insights API NuGet packages. Those three packages are Microsoft.ApplicationInsights, Microsoft.ApplicationInsights.web, and Microsoft.ApplicationInsights.javascript. Also, a configuration file is added to your project called ApplicationInsights.config. Once you're in the Solution Explorer for your project, if you want to view the application insights that are collected, you actually have to right-click on your project, which will bring up the right-click context menu, and then you'll click on Open Application Insights, and that will actually open up a web browser and take you to the Application Insights uh, dashboard within Azure. Okay, so once you select your new project and you picked your ASP.NET web application, you're going to have several different templates from which you can choose. The first one is the empty project template. Basically, this is going to create the most basic ASP.NET project possible. There's no web forms, there's no MVC, there's no web API. It's just a basic, basic ASP.NET project with no content in it. The next template that's available to you is web forms. If you pick this template, you're going to end up with an ASP.NET Web Forms web application, and it's going to have some default content that goes with it. You can also specify the authentication scheme that you want to use, those kinds of things. Next is the MVC template. This is the one that we're going to be primarily interested in for this particular course. Uh, the MVC web application will come with a bunch of default content. You can specify authentication. You can set up unit tests, that kind of thing. Next is the Web API. And basically, this is a template for creating a project for implementing RESTful services. Now, a quick comment here concerning Web API. Because Web API came out with MVC4, a lot of people associate MVC with Web API and think that they kind of go hand in hand. And it is true that for a lot of projects, you do make use of both of those technologies. But at its core, MVC and Web API are actually two different technologies. Both of them here can be hosted within ASP.NET, but they're not one and the same thing. 
Uh, that's something to kind of keep in mind that you can actually build web API projects that don't make use of MVC at all, and you can build MVC projects that don't use web API at all. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind when setting up your MVC projects. The next project template is the single page application. And basically, this is a project template that allows you to create rich client-side JavaScript-driven HTML5 applications. Um, these types of applications are becoming more and more the norm, and uh, it's definitely a project template worth taking a look at if you're interested in building that kind of web app. And finally, the last project template that's available is something called the Azure Mobile Service. And this basically creates a project for a web API-based mobile backend for Azure Mobile Services. So if you're interested in building something like that, then you would select the Azure Mobile Service template. Now, when you set up your new project, you're going to have the option to choose from several different authentication methods. The first one is no authentication. If you choose this, there will be no authentication added to your web application. You'll have to manually add it yourself. The next authentication method are individual user accounts. These are user accounts that are stored in SQL Server, and then the authentication can be integrated with third-party services such as Facebook or Google. This is also the default authentication method for both the web forms and the MVC projects. The next authentication method that you can choose are organizational accounts. Um, the application will be configured to use the Windows Identity Foundation for authentication for using the Azure Active Directory or a Windows Active Directory. Um, also as part of Azure Active Directory includes Office 365. So if you want to build an MVC application that authenticates its users against an, or, an organization's Office 365 account, then you would be interested in using organizational accounts. And finally, there's Windows authentication. And this uses the Windows authentication IIS module. You'll see this a lot in corporate environments where, web, where users are authenticated against the local Windows domain server. In the new project wizard for creating web application, there's an option to add unit testing to your application. Since the early days of ASP.NET MVC, the option to add a unit test project has been available. In fact, one of the big benefits of using ASP.NET MVC over web forms is the ability to unit test your web application code. It's always recommended to, to write unit tests for your web application. And so if you want to uh, make use of that feature, then you, you'll check the box and it will add a unit test project for you. And unit testing continues to be an important option in ASP.NET MVC 5. Finally, the last option you have when creating a new project is you can actually choose to host the application in Microsoft Azure. Um, they've actually built it right into the new project wizard, and you can check a box to host in the cloud, and it gives you the option of hosting it in Microsoft Azure. To use this feature, once again, like Application Insights, you have to have an active Azure subscription, but fortunately, free trial subscriptions are available, so you can get started today. Um, with an Azure subscription and publishing up websites. The little box looks like that. It has a checkbox to host in the cloud, and then you can choose to host it um, in a website or in a virtual machine. So we're going to come up here and click File, New, Project. And the New Project dialog is going to appear. Now, for our demonstrations, we're going to be using C Sharp. So I'm going to close the Visual Basic, and I'm going to click on C Sharp and expand that out. I'm going to click on Web. And now here's our new one ASP.NET project type. I'm also going to go up here to the .NET framework, and I'm going to change it to .NET 4.5.1. Now down here, you can specify the name for your project as well as the solution name. Um, I'm going to leave them set to Web Application 1, but you would set them to what would ever be appropriate for your application. Uh, over here, this is that Add Application Insights to Project. So I'm going to check this box. Now you'll notice I'm already logged in here as myself to uh, Microsoft Azure. If this is your first time checking this box, it will prompt you to log into Azure and verify that you have an account and a subscription. As you can see, I'm using the free trial too. So you can sign up for a free trial with Azure and then you can make use of this feature by logging into it. Then I come down here and it says Send Telemetry to and we're going to leave the option here set to New Application Insights Resource. So now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. 
And now we're going to get our little ASP.NET project wizard, where we can go in there and configure the template, configure the authentication, um, any type of unit tests we want to include, as well as the option to host it in Microsoft Azure. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick the MVC template. Okay, and this is going to automatically check down here the MVC box to include our folders and our core references. If I had selected web forms, you'll notice that web forms is now picked. You can also click on empty and you can select it yourself. So we're going to start here with the MVC project template. We're going to have MVC selected. Now we're going to come over here and check on our authentication. We have four options, no authentication, individual user accounts, organizational accounts, or Windows authentication. For our purposes right now, we're going to go with no authentication. So I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to come down here and I have the option of adding unit tests. So I'm going to add some unit tests and that will be our unit test project name. The final option is to actually decide whether or not I want to host this in the cloud with Microsoft Azure. I'm going to go ahead and leave this option checked and we'll take a quick look at how to deploy this particular website to the cloud. So that's checked and you'll notice down here I'm already signed in as myself to Microsoft Azure. I have the option of deploying this as a website or virtual machine. We're going to leave it set to website and then I'm going to click OK. And now what Visual Studio is going to do, it's going to prompt me for my Microsoft Azure information for setting up a Microsoft Azure website. So we'll leave the website name set to Web Application 14010. We're going to change our region. We're going to make it be to the Eastern US. We're not going to have any type of database server for this application, but if you did, you would configure it here. And then I'm going to click OK. Now Visual Studio is going to take all of this information and create our project for us. Once our project is created, we'll go ahead and build it and run it to make sure that it works. And then we'll take a look at the application insights and we'll see about deploying it to Microsoft Azure. Excellent. Our project has been created. So we'll come up here. We're going to close this folder. We'll close the project folder and the test folder. And we're going to come to Solution and we're going to right click and we're going to rebuild the solution. Anytime I create a new project in Visual Studio, web application or otherwise, after the project is done being created, I always consider it to be a best practice to go ahead and build it to make sure that my project has all the resources that it needs to work properly. As we can see here, our project rebuilt, two succeeded. That was our web application and our unit tests. Okay, so let's run our application now in Internet Explorer. So we're going to come up here and we're going to select Internet Explorer. And then we're going to run our application by clicking the button. When we do that, Internet Explorer is going to fire up and our web page will load. And as we can see, our web page has loaded so we know our project has been set up correctly. So now we're going to close this. And now we come back to Visual Studio. We're going to come over to our Web Application 1 project, right click on our project, and we will actually open the application insights that run within Azure. So I'm going to click on Open Application Insights. This will fire up a web browser, and I'm going to have the opportunity to sign into Microsoft Azure. So I click on that. and then I am directed to the Azure portal and it displays my application insights for my sample web application. And I can use the information collected from here to improve the performance of my application. So now I'm going to close Microsoft Azure and return back to my application. Now I want to publish my application to the cloud. If you remember when we originally set up the application, we configured it to be hosted within the cloud with Microsoft Azure. I can come over to Web Publish Activity and we can see where it set up my new web application when the project was created. If I want to publish my web application, I can click this link right here. And now it's going to give me the Publish Web dialog. I could have also gotten this dialog by right clicking here and clicking publish. So now I can come in here and I can actually publish my web application to Windows Azure.
So I will click Publish. And now it is deploying my package up to the cloud. And it is opening my website. This is the same website that we ran locally, but now we're actually running it in Azure in the cloud. So as you can see, using the one ASP.NET project type, we were able to set up uh, an ASP.NET web, web application using MVC5. We were able to set up the authentication. In this case, we chose no authentication. We were able to add a unit test project. We were also able to add application insights, which connect into Azure to help give us performance telemetry about our application so that we can improve it. And finally, we were able to hook directly into Microsoft Azure and publish our website directly to the cloud. As you can see, the Microsoft uh, One ASP.NET project type is extremely powerful and makes things very easy.